Good morning, millennials. Welcome back to the toes and happy Tuesday. Hope everybody's having a gorgeous, beautiful, stunning and smart day thus far. I know I am because I'm just sitting here in an itchy sweater with my jacks. I hope that everyone is having a great day. You can all pat yourselves on the back because we made it through Monday and we made it through April Fool's Day unscathed. We did, I hope well, no some one, of us. I hope no one got you in such a way that you couldn't recover from. Like you recovered mm-hmm. so quickly. I mean, I did like dream of Keenan and Minka Kelly dating and what joy that would bring Keenan, and that made me happy. And then knowing that wasn't true, that was hard for me to come down from. But maybe what we can do now on April 2nd is manifest these things. A lot of brands like do April Fool's jokes and then they realize that's actually what the people want. And it kind of put things into motion. So maybe we could put this into motion. And the clip went a little viral. Maybe Keenan will see it. Maybe Minka will. Maybe Minka will. Maybe the Uber driver will. Well, we know he will because he and I are super, super tight. Yeah, he's a, he is a toaster now. We're just connected through like this time-space continuum. Like it will always come back to me for him and for me it will always come back to him. Yeah. So we've got a great show today. It's Tuesday. Um, we can relax, you know, let our guards down. Yesterday I feel like we were very defensive. Yeah, and we didn't know what was what. What news was true. Still don't it, it know was if kind Tori of spelling's getting divorced. Still don't really still care. don't care. <laughs> it was just kind of like an upsetting sort of way to be. Be very, you know, unstable. Today we're back to the, your stable garlies. Yeah, even though I had fun in general in the day yesterday, I saw other people were tagging us in pranks that they played on their friends. And it was just a jolly good time, honestly. Like I'm glad it's only one day and I'm glad that it's over. But I feel mm-hmm. like we made the most of it. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm glad it's over for sure. But I had a good time. We it were, was all in good fun. We recorded the Redheads yesterday and it was... And that was no joke. Oh, no. It was so good. You guys have to read this month's book, by Baby. It weirdly, I wasn't expecting this, was polarizing for the group. Oh, no. A line was drawn in the sand. Oh, no. Team A versus Team B. Who do you think was aligned? Margo and... Oh, this is hard. Dana. No, they're never aligned. Okay, Margo and you? No. Margo and Rhett. Yeah. Ding, ding, ding. How did I know? Me and Dana. It was giving Clara and the sun energy. If If you you know, you know. And if you don't know, it's never too late. No, and now's the time, you guys. It's the year of the redheads, redheads generation. Are you saying there's a redheads, there's going to be a redheads renaissance? There's been a redheads renaissance. There's a redheads revolution. And come to the Redheads party at the Redheads clubhouse. You're the special guest of the one and only Redheads mouse. Who do you think? Oh, Mi- Mickey. Miska, Muska. Miska, Muska, Mickey Mouse. Speaking of, something disturbing happened to me yesterday and I don't know what to make of it. You were disturbed? I was disturbed. Tell us. I saw a mouse in my backyard. Question mark? Question mark. That's not happened Hmm. to me yet. What does that mean for my homestead? Can anyone shed light on this? I I know, like, I've never seen a mouse outside. That's so crazy. That's seeing, like, you know, a dog walk on its hind legs or seeing a teacher out of school. No, he was seriously in my backyard. Like, I'm sorry, he wasn't on a swing set. Where? Um, just on the grass a few steps away from when I emerged. Oh, oh, I feel like that means he, the call was coming from inside the house. Like you his think? family's inside. Why was he so close to your house? Or unless you stopped an infestation in its tracks. Like unless he was on his way to set up camp in your gutters. I have been. Is that where they live? Gutters? I don't know. I'm we're actually making, getting, I don't, new, we're getting new gutters. So that would be I don't know good. anything about houses like. I don't know either. So without scaring me too much, like, is this just, you know, irrelevant to what's going on inside the home? Yeah, I mean, like, mouses live outside. I have, like, that opossum that rolls through. Do mice live outside? That's the question. I've never seen one outside. Or is outside, he going to take shelter? I mean, I see them outside in New York, but that's, like, if you saw a mouse in your trash, I would say, okay, let's get your bins washed, but I wouldn't be concerned. Chilling in the grass? Like, I don't know. No, no, I don't no. know. It's weird. It was so weird i don't want to freak out but i need to know if i should freak out and we literally just had the pest guy here i feel like no shade i feel like he brought him for sure so like, make, he's a new pest guy like maybe he wants to like make himself necessary yeah dropped one on my backyard 
But so that I have to call him again. Wow, that's like kind of crazy. I can't believe you're just telling me this now. I feel like this is something you would have like called me about. I know. I wasn't really by my phone when it happened. And I was just trying. I'm Really, I'm trying not to overreact. But I need to know like what this means for me. And did you freeze in that moment? It's so interesting to to experience something like that and then learn something about yourself. Like, how do you react? Some people freeze. Some people run. Some people scream. Jackie, I was paralyzed with fear. I could not move. I couldn't speak. <laughs> like that. The good news is it's on camera. I can send you a video. <gasps> Obsessed. I just was like, ooh. <laughs> Wait, that's so kind of light and airy of and you. And then he scurried along. Bruno was out doing business. Like of course a business he was. Man. He actually was thinking about going to business school. I said, Bruno, you know everything you need to know. I hear Harvard has a good program. <laughs> I hear they don't. Wait, also, now, I'm very against it. But, you know, this situation that we're talking about makes the case for having a cat. But let me just say something. Everyone says that like cats and mice. Why the fuck do I want to cuddle with an animal that just ate a dirty ass mouse? Like that mouse is in the cat's belly. I'm good. To me, they're both gross. Interesting. Okay, I'm not getting a cat. Like unless the cat can live outside. Like no. no. Well, so that's what Brian has. And that's why when I go to Brian's house, like I literally can't go near his barn because that's where the cats live and the cats eat the mice. And it's like a good thing. They came with the house when Brian bought them. They just like live outside. Okay, I'm not getting a cat, but the good news is, is that there is a cat that wanders around my home. I've told you Excuse about him. Me? Bruno invites him over late at night. And they just kind Ooh. of like go crazy. But no, there is okay. a cat. Like I see it on my cameras all the time. So maybe like he'll take care of business. Maybe the cat got killed and the mice problem that he's been keeping at bay. Like, have you seen the cat in a while? Maybe this is how we find out the neighborhood cat was run over by a car. <laughs> I saw roadkill. It was kind of far away. Like, I just saw roadkill, like, one time. No, like, how far from your house? No, it was totally the cat. <gasps> like, in thinking about what it looked like. Okay, so here's what you have to do. You and some of your neighbors have to go to a shelter and save a cat. And you need to build it, like, a house outside and leave it food every couple of days. Cats don't need a lot. And he becomes a new neighborhood cat. We need a neighborhood cat. Good thing I'm so close with my neighbors that I'm always talking about. Oh, God. First Mary Orton and now the neighbors. Like, Jackie just loves to rub in my face how, like, many strides she's making socially. You know, when you first moved down there, you were very much, like, in your newborn and then pregnant era. And I feel like you didn't try hard to make friends. And I loved it because you needed me. You begged me to come down. I was kind of the center of your universe. And now you're in that post... Now you're in that like postpartum era where your kids are fine and like you can do your hair and like you're out going to dinners and lunch. And, you know, you don't need me anymore. And you know what? Fuck you too, okay? That's your perspective. By the way, that's reality. Did I not just slay the house down on exactly what has it gone on? No, you've misrepresented because of course Tony's always my number one choice. Means nothing. Still always begging you to come. Literally was on FaceTime with you. I think I called you, what, six times last night? Yeah, you were kind of being clingy last night. What was going on? Was everything okay at home? <laughs> my neighbors were out. <laughs> no, I, um, I missed my girl and we had a lot to talk about. We had so much to talk about. We were being so funny on FaceTime yesterday. I don't want to rub it in with you guys because like some things that we say on FaceTime, we then regurgitate here to like tell you guys. But some of them are just like too. What were we talking about? Give me a clue. I can't. I don't know. I don't remember. I just remember it was funny. Like Ben was even laughing over overhearing us. Oh, yeah. I remember making you laugh. Yeah. <laughs> Your boy. <laughs> Your boy? Your boy Marsh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um. So yeah, that's just like kind of private things. We're kind of really private people. Super, super private. Super private. Super. And other than that, what was I doing today? Oh my God, I was kind of being a freak today. You know who I'm obsessed with? Huberman. Of course. And? Claudia Ashre. Yes. You're not going to guess. You might guess. Okay. Tinks. Yes. Okay. I need you to think younger, like way younger. Sabrina Carpenter way younger oh my god um young sheldon way younger harry so close who is harry in my mind like harry's doppelganger twin come on you know gates yes oh you're on the gates train 
I was talking Gates Scott Chuck this morning, Raven from The Bachelor and her husband. Like, their kid is so cute. And I don't know why he just, like, reminds me of Harry because they were born on, like, the same day or whatever. And Jackie's, like, both her kids were born, like, the same day as Raven's kids. I don't know. I just, like, I think of Raven's kids as, like, cousins of your kids, like, for real. And I was stalking Gates um, this weekend because Raven posted a bunch of stuff. They went to Arkansas and Gates was in Arkansas for Easter and, like, he went fishing. He fell asleep in church. Like, <laughs> it was the cutest thing. Gates like, I'm just fall asleep at church and go fishing. I'm obsessed with this kid. Like, he's one of the cutest and he just looks like the sweetest boy. It's so true. I Gates is a great follow. Gates is a great follow. And yeah, he's a very impressive little boy. Yeah, and I feel like he does we like big often, boy things. I feel like we often compare him and like, you know, his progress and his growth and everything to Harry. And like, I'm sorry, Gates is like so like Gates is so ahead of his time. Gates is gonna skip a grade. No, yeah, Gates is like very advanced. Like he was walking at six months and it's like, Harry, get up. Get up. <laughs> Look at Gates. You know what? I'm Harry obsessed actually with him. had a play date with Gates. Harry had an influencer play date when we were in Dallas. I know. Did you take any pictures of Gates and Harry? Did yeah, I see them? Maybe I, I, I did. Oh yeah, too. I saw Raven's backyard. You said she's making like a a commune in her backyard or something. No, I didn't say that. But No, what's the word? Montessori. Oh. It, I feel like I'm always hearing parents say like Montessori with that stupid stool. They're like, it's the Montessori method. What the fuck is Montessori? Because Montessori is a biblical word, right? Is it? I thought it's, it's French. But oh I my god, it's that. it's so giving like, like it's Genesis. We say to me. Oh my god, to me it's giving like Genesis, Exodus, um, whatever Montessori. the other books are called. Montessori, Deuteronomy, and Montessori. De- hey, by the way. Thank you. It's giving Deuteronomy. <laughs> Not I need me. to look up what the fuck is Montessori. I'll tell you. I'll explain it as best as I can, even though it evades me a little bit. It's like kids playing with toys and things that are useful in real life. So they wouldn't just play with like blobs and stuff that's not real. They'll use like a, a kid size sink and a kid side kid oh. size like cooking stuff. So they're learning real skills through their toys and not just like fucking around. Montessori is an educational philosophy and practice that fosters rigorous self-motivated growth for children and adolescents in all areas of their development with the goal of nurturing each child's natural desire for knowledge, understanding and respect. Okay, that, that literally tells you didn't nothing. tell me anything. I think the way I explained it pretty much sums it up. They're learning like real skills through their yeah, toys. A Montessori a- classroom places an emphasis on hands-on training and developing real world skills. I need to know the root of the word. Like, I'm, root I'm voting French. Of word. Like, give me a Merriam-Webster, like, etymology of Montessori. Thank you. Etymology. Okay, NVM, go back. Etymology is Deuteronomy. Montessori is Latin. Classic. Ugh, like, aren't all words. So true. Cop out. Give me a word. Any word, and I'll show you it is Greek. Montessori comes from the Greek word sorisia, which means sink. <laughs> sink. Okay, I didn't find it, but like I'm glad we I'm glad we finally spoke about Montessori because like and also like Montezuma, Montefiore, like I just feel confused. Yeah, and I feel like a lot of parents like feel pressured by Montessori. It's like, are you doing Montessori? Right. I'm not doing Montessori. I just want to say, like, sure, I have some toys that would fall under the Montessori umbrella. Great. But I yeah. also have some, like, blob things and, like, kid tings. I also like, feel like this. Montessori is also when, like, everything in the room or at least the playroom is, like, kid-sized. You know, like... Ki- right, like a kid-sized house, a kid-sized sink, a kid-sized kitchen, a kid-sized, kid-sized oven. Kid-sized table and chairs. So, like, they are kind of feel, like, grown, you know, when everything's to scale. It's important for kids to know that they're kids. Like, this is not... Like, I don't like that. Yeah, I mean, it's just like the flavor of the day right now. Yeah, I see it everywhere. I think it definitely has merits like all things, but I, it can't put me in a box. And they try. They constantly try to put Jackson in a box. And she says, no, who put me in this box? They would love to put me in a box, Claude, and they can't. Your hair's looking so good recently. Thank you, because through a myriad of things, like I learned how to do it. You helped me a couple of my fave influencer tutorials. <clears throat> and you you're want, using the Dyson Airwrap, is that I'm correct? I'm using the Dyson Airwrap. Love, love, I got love. my hair cut in Dallas. Love, love, love. And she's a new woman. She's a new woman. You want to know what's crazy, though? And I don't mean to brag. I don't. But I'm, I guess I'm, this is a, like a little bit of a brag. Humble brag. Okay. I noticed the last like week or two, like I'm getting regrowth strands, which are the worst it's worse than Mm -hmm. hair falling out because they're just like this long and they don't fit into a pony and like they're always like poking out however like I barely noticed the fallout 
stage, the hair fallout stage. Oh, there was like one week where I was like, oh, I think my hair is starting to fall out. And but you know, there are seasons where you shed, even if you're not postpartum. Yep. And it wasn't really bad or anything. And and I kind of forgot about it. And all of a sudden, I've got regrowth. Oh my god, you just reminded me of my dream, which is beyond uninteresting to hear, but I'm going to share it anyway because Thanks. like the entire the entire night I was sleeping, I was in my dream the entire night waiting for my water to break. Is that crazy? And then and what it happened? Didn't break. And then I woke up and peed. So like maybe that was it. It's giving that was it. <laughs> yeah. I think it's just kind of like the extent of the meaning, you know? Yeah. Exciting though. Yeah, very. Um, so we've got a great show. We do. Before we confirm. dive in, Jax, we have five stories today. Describe them in three words. Had to trim. Wow. A blessing. Trim. Yep. We were abundant. Maybe the sixth will be for tomorrow. It wasn't, you know, urgent. Oh, I absolutely love that. Okay. So, I mean, yeah. Yeah. Without further ado, it is time for the fast five stories that you need to know. And Jax, I just want to remind you on that later on in the show, you have something you need to tell the people. I just want to make sure you're set up on your iPad. Um, I'm set up on my iPad. Okay. Well, before that, the fast five stories that you need to know are brought to you by Booking.com. Booking. Yep. From cozy bed and breakfast to trendy boutique hotels, with so many choices across the U.S., you can book whoever you want to be. So Booking.com knows that people and travelers are multifaceted, so they offer a wide breadth of places and accommodations so that you can lean into a different side of yourself depending on where you go. This is so real. I feel like wherever you go on vacation, like you become that persona. Like when I'm on the va- the beach and like I become really tan, I'm just kind of like island life is for me. I could live here. Like you know, I'm a local. Let's go surfing. It's like a personality transplant. And Booking.com understands like you are multi-personality and they have a trip for any personality. You can book a remote cabin in the woods. That's where I'm like, oh, I'm so chilly. Give me a cardigan. Let's roast a fire and like make our own chili. That's obviously my personality then. You can explore your adventurous side or you can book a five-star hotel to indulge your luxury side. Oh, also a good option. There are so many possibilities. Um, you know, we're planning our next big trip. And I feel like that's, for me, that's going to be like, oh, like summer girl. I'm just a summer girl. Like that's going to be my personality. Flip-flop sundress, you know, natural hair. Just like a little spray in the detangler, you know, like so sunny. Um, so whatever your personality is going to be, Booking.com has a trip for you. So this spring, check out Booking.com for your ideal hotel or vacation home, no matter where you go in the U.S. I love booking a home, and Booking.com is the perfect place to book the whole house. So book whoever you want to be on Booking.com. Booking. Yeah. Jax, would you like to test that out? Booking.com. Booking. Yeah. Today's episode is also brought to you by Caraway, which is perfect timing because I made the most sickening chicken chili last night in my Caraway Dutch oven. Four points. Yeah, that's right. So Caraway, with so many collections to explore, there is Caraway cookware for every kind of cook. They also don't make just cookware. They make food storage. They make now utensils. They've got some great items. Their internet famous kitchenware is a staple for any home, and it comes in a variety of modern shades to fit with any design aesthetic. Ditch the chemicals with Caraway. So Caraway Home is special because their products are non-toxic kitchenware. They feature a chemical-free ceramic coating. Food can be prepared with peace of mind that no hard-to-pronounce chemicals will lean into your healthy ingredients. I'm like a full Caraway kitchen now. I've got Caraway knives. I've got uh, Caraway like wooden spoons, wooden spatulas, utensils. I've got all the Caraway pans. I've got Caraway food storage. My chicken chili from last night is in this huge vat from Caraway food storage. I've also got some like, you know, a peeler, like I don't know what you call those things, like utensils, like things I don't use but Ben does, like a pizza roller, a, z- a peeler, like, yeah. you know, what do you call those things? I don't know. Now that you have like utensils in my head, I can't think. It's good stuff. Kitchen so- gadgets. Gadgets. So all the products are non-toxic. They are easy cooking and they're well-loved. Over 65,000 people have rated five stars about their Caraway kitchen. Now it's time to try it for yourself. So just a reminder, their iconic cookware sets come with the saute pan, the fry pan, the Dutch oven, and the saucepan, plus lids for all of them, a canvas lid holder, and a magnetic pan rack for storage. It's the ultimate kitchen setup, and you will save $150 versus buying the items individually. Visit carawayhome.com slash toaster to take advantage of a 10% additional off your next purchase. The deal is exclusive for our listeners, so visit carawayhome.com slash toaster and use code toaster at checkout. Caraway, it's non-toxic cookware, and it's made modern. Thank you, Claudia. You're welcome. Our first story, Sabrina Carpenter is a current face of Skims. She <gasps> Wait, what? I just got a People magazine on Elon Musk and Amber Heard tie the knot in private ceremony. You're trying to get me back. Fuck! You, do you know how long I planned that for? I feel sad. Also, like you went outside the bounds of April Fool's. That's a cardinal sin. 
Okay, get over it. Like, how did you know I was lying? I feel like I, I did such a good you. job. I feel like I did such a good job acting. Like, no, literally, I was on to you from the moment you said it. And then I was like, let me wait and see what she's going to say. And I knew it was like meant for me. Oh, you're a bitch. You're a dumb fucking bitch. I hate you. I know you are, but what am I? A dumb fucking bitch. <laughs> I'm sorry, Turdy. Fuck, I really wanted to get you back. Now I'm like embarrassed. Can we cut that out? <laughs> <laughs> What's more embarrassing than like trying to trick someone and like they literally like clocked you from the second you started. Like I'm humiliated. <laughs> like, I am embarrassed. Yeah. I'm humiliated. I'm so like, I wish I could take away your shame, blame and your able to escape. <laughs> <laughs> shame, blame and the pranking game. Do I have to be okay. on guard for thee now all the time? No, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'll like, stand I put all on my guard for thee. Yeah, I'm done. <laughs> Wrap it up. It's like the equivalent of like getting stuffed in basketball. Yeah, like <laughs> blocked, like literally. I'm That's humiliated. Oh, by the way, I can't. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't want to talk about it. No, the thing is, you weren't wrong. I feel like sometimes when we say stuff, like people don't understand what we're saying. Like when we okay. said it. Okay, 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 okay. Ready? Ready? No, we, I need to talk so about this. So I yesterday said that my, I was good, I like, I was doing decently well in my bracket, but I'm not gonna win because I had Iowa State winning and they're out. And people are like, they're not out, the women's is in. Did you guys think I had women in my bracket? Like, do you know me? No, I did the men's the bracket. The I confused them is because you said, because Caitlin's on Iowa, goes to Iowa, so I rooted for Iowa. And if you kept listening, we were talking about the Iowa school juju in general. Like, I wasn't you talking about, I said. The men's because things, big things are happening at Iowa. I literally didn't even know that you March Madness included women, okay? It doesn't. I, no, by the way, it does. <laughs> it does. There was a game last night. It was LSU versus Iowa. It was like a big deal. Um, it does, but like I like did the men's bracket. Bra the women's bracket? I don't know. Yeah, I think they have like separate, yeah, they have separate the tournaments. Men's. No, they have their separate tournaments. Okay. And I guess you can do a bracket. Like, sure. did you guys seriously think like, yeah, like I was doing that? Have you ever listened to an episode of this show? I'm sorry, like that was not on you. And I feel the need to like clarify, like for the people who were so utterly confused. Being like, Claudia, they're still in. Uh, okay. And? And? That was like really infuriating. No, I know. Sometimes like we're so deeply misunderstood. Like I want to rage in the comments, like responding to everyone, but like I'm more mysterious than that. No, that's like yesterday, my friend Mary Orton, I saw in her story, like someone messaged her after the toast being like, did you do an April Fool's pregnancy prank? It's like, were you not listening? <sighs> oh my God. Reading comprehension is not taught well enough in listening this school system. Listening comprehension. I'm, I'm done. No, seriously. Listening comprehension comes from reading comprehension. Like that's where you learn how to internalize words. And we need to stop with the algebra. We need to stop with the history. We need to focus on reading comprehension because you guys, well, not you guys, but like people, don't fucking listen. <laughs> it drives me nuts. Like people will DM me. Like I can't believe you said, literally, I think I was having, I gave like a, one of my usual spiels on Ozempic and somebody, and I, I was talking about the eating disorder community and somebody was like, I can't believe you said people with eating disorders need to stop listening to the toast or something. And I'm like, are you dumb? You don't have an eating disorder. You have a hearing disorder because <laughs> you didn't fucking listen to me. It bothers me so much. Like, listen. And then if you want to have a problem with what I say, if you actually understand what I said, then you're allowed. But if you start like rage commenting, like, and you didn't even listen, like you're so dumb. Well, you misunderstood. Yeah. Pay attention, please. Please. Now we can get to the first story, which is very which exciting, a, interesting news. It is. Sabrina Carpenter is in the new Skims campaign. So not only have the pictures dropped from the campaign, but also an interview with W Magazine. Sabrina Carpenter wants to shock you. So this so is So let's just talk newsworthy, visually. you know, for a couple reasons. One, like she looks great. Two, big She looks amazing. Like big moves for Sabrina and Skim like great. The elephant in the room is Taylor Swift connection. And now this is like the third time where Skims has done like a major campaign with somebody really connected to Taylor. First it was uh, Lana Del Rey, then it was Brittany Mahomes. And I feel like we could have explained that away. Like with Brittany Mahomes, we were like, this was probably shot a year ago and she had just become friends with Taylor. It was just like an unfortunate coincidence. Like it was really, I think could be explained. 
this Sabrina Carpenter thing, like Sabrina Carpenter is at the level now where she can be eligible for a spritz, a spritz, a skims campaign because of the Eras tour. So like they saw her on the Eras tour and decided to poach her. Like it's, and this one is, we can't explain this one away. Now we need to say like, what is going on? But it might just be honestly that like Taylor is so in control of the culture and the zeitgeist and like whoever she's with becomes hot. Like that it's just sort of a necessary cycle. It's like Kim piggying, piggybacking off, like Taylor's setting the trends and Kim and chooses the is, trends. Is hopping setters. on the trends. Yeah. It's just crazy because like Kim used to set the trends. Well, she's still setting the trends by like choosing and make, like it's really, they're both kind of working hand in hand though they don't even know it. It's just, it's a, it's too much. So how do you think it played out? Like, well, also there are, you know, Taylor, I mean, Taylor, Kim is loosely connected to Odell Beckham. Like I believe that they're dating. Um, and there was like a sports report that Odell Beckham really wants to be traded to the Chiefs. That's April Fool's for sure. No, no, that was like weeks ago. Yeah, I be- mean, if you're a football player and he's like really good yeah, at what of course, he does, it's the best you team. would want to. And if you had a choice of where to go, you would request. You wouldn't be like worried about your rumored girlfriend's feud. No, no, That's you wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, you wouldn't. Hmm, weird. Uh, weird. Couldn't be me. Um, how do I think this played out? Like, I do feel in some sense, like Kim is a little bit um distanced from like the everyday happenings. I don't think Kim is at the point now. I think for a while it was where like Kim was hand selecting every single Skims ambassador. But they have so many campaigns now and so many different collections that I don't think Kim is, you know, sitting in the meetings being like, let's do this person. And I think that like, that was probably intentional. I think she wants Skims to like stand on its own as a company. And I feel like now it kind of has like, I think of Skims as like a real business, not just like an influencer project from Kim, you know? Yes. And so maybe this is, you know, uh, a strategy in that you know where we're, we're hopefully not thinking of Kim when we're thinking of skims you know well I, I just feel like again for Kim it's like yeah why wouldn't I have this girl that's attached to Taylor I think Kim has moved on from the drama it's really well, about Kim said yeah that's actually true Kim said that on watch what happens live and he was like is that still a thing she's like no I'm over it and it's like well it's a good thing you're over it you weren't the one we were worried about yeah and we've said that over and over again so it's not weird that Kim wanted Sabrina but then, That's actually, by the way, you just cracked it. That's what it is. Like, Kim is so wanting to move on from this Taylor thing. She said it years ago. And so th- doing things like this is like, look, I've moved on. And the Watch What Happens Live commentary, like, even sometimes Kim is playing in the background of, um, Taylor is playing in the background of Kim's Instagram stories when she's on set and they're playing music. Like, she has made it very clear, like, this is not a thing. Penelope was spotted wearing Eris Tour merch. Like, but it's not Kim's thing to move on from. Like, Taylor was the, you know, the... The injured the party. Yeah. And she's never moving on. Yeah. Never. She was just talking about them in her Time Magazine article. Yep. And Kim's just like, I'm over it. I'm over it. And it's like, girl, look up. Yeah. So then my question is, so Skims reaches out to Sabrina. I'm sure Sabrina ran it by Taylor. Because Taylor. Well, Sabrina's not dumb. Yeah. And she's always like giving credit to Taylor. Yes, and I have to assume that Taylor said it was okay. Like with Brittany Mahomes, I really believed that it was pri- it predated their friendship. No, I believe Brittany ran it by Taylor too. I believe that her, her and Brittany weren't even friends when the photo shoot was set. It was like a holiday campaign. They book holiday in the beginning of the year. Mm-hmm. Like big brands, like they have their photo shoots scheduled out all year long. Okay, I'll accept that. Not this though. With this one, no. Because they're obviously capitalizing on the Eras Tour momentum. Yeah. I assume she got it. I mean, in the W Magazine article, it's like every other word is either about Kim or every other word is about Taylor, the Eras Tour. Like, it's crazy. Yeah, and I feel like this is the first one, even though for us it's like the third, that sort of blends the two for the people. Like, people are shocked over this considering. Like, I don't know who else aside from maybe Blake Lively that could have a Skins campaign and it would be like so close to Taylor. No, that's different. That's different because Blake Lively is like in... Oh, 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 G. Like, she has been there through ups, downs, through, like, 2010. Sabrina is a relatively new addition. This would be, like, Blake Lively would be the same as, like, Abigail with the red hair no, doing like, skims. No, no, no. Okay, Cara Delevingne. That's a good example. They've been, like, like oh, yeah, literally she's so in the close box. forever. Yeah, it's the same thing. Yeah. Sabrina is would be, like, or, or, or Blake Lively would be, like, Haim doing a skims campaign. Yeah. Or, like, So Selena. I'm trying to think of, Yes, a similar 
to Sabrina. But like Lana Del Rey was her date to the Grammys. Like that's really close. Jackie, and I, she was at the game. Yeah. By the way, Taylor's okay with it. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's it's just clear. Like honestly, but it, is, it couldn't get closer to Taylor unless it was Taylor for Skims, which would literally never happen. Taylor would never be in lingerie. It, Conservative she, queen. No. Uh, tr- tortured poets. Okay, tortured. They need to come out with a skim shorts. tortured poets collab. That's it. That's how the story ends. The thing is, Skims is like a billion dollar, like multi billion dollar company, and I still don't think they could afford Taylor. Like Taylor has never been the face of anything. Well, she was for Diet Coke, which is literally like a uh, the biggest Capital company. One. Right. Those are the types of brands. Those are like thirty times the size of Skims. Like when you think about, she's done AT and T, Capital One. Diet Coke, literally the biggest brands in the entire world, not even just America. I feel like that's a. I'm just saying that would be a nice Disney way for Plus this story to end. But if there were ever a time, it's not now. Taylor is literally like on the. It's not the time. She's all the way up. Her stock's never been higher. I wouldn't say the same for Kim at the moment. She's just kind of like stagnant. Yeah, but she, they come in waves. I feel yes, like they yes. know like people want them in like in doses. Yes. And we had like two years of crazy Kardashian yeah. obsession. Also, I don't think that like if they ever were to end this feud, like it being Taylor for Skims, like that's too much for Kim. Like that's Kim gets everything then, you know? It's like if Taylor it's gets the attention. Poets for Skims? No, it's still like that's the Skims win. And like you said, Taylor's the injured party. Oh, my God. I just saw, like, something move. Okay, it's, like, a piece of dust. I'm like, oh, my God, there's a mouse in here. You got me going crazy. Um, yeah, it would be too much. Like, it wouldn't be weighed evenly, I think. It's never happening. No, like, we can, we can dilly-dally all day hypothesizing and fantasizing, but it's not happening. But if Taylor, like, woke up one day, like, and she had to, I don't know, maybe she's, like, going through therapy and she has to release mm-hmm. her old grudges if she wants to like move forward and break through whatever and she has to move on with Kim yeah the way that they would announce a reconciliation is Taylor for Skims I don't think so like at all it would and break the I, internet it would but I don't think they would do it I don't think Taylor would do it Kim would do it in a second I also don't think that like let's say Taylor was going through therapy and needed to forgive her past whatever I think she would make up with Kim in private like we would never know about it like I don't think she wants to give more air to this you know even though she talks about it a lot. Yeah, she does. I don't know. I don't know either. Like, some, and you know what? I know what I like about Taylor. Like, sometimes people in your life wrong you, and like a therapist would tell you to let it go, and sometimes you just can't, and that's okay. Yeah, but I feel like, I feel like the times when I see that people have to let it go is on reality shows. Mm-hmm. But that's because you're around the person all the time. Like, I wonder right. what a therapist thinks about you, like, being done with a person and just cutting them. I think they're fine with that. I but think they I would think say that's actually have, healthy. I think to have, like, a negative person in your orbit, it mm-hmm. ultimately harms you. Therefore, yeah. you have to let it go if you're going to be around them. Okay, Jackie Ashray, PhD. Yeah, I saw that on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Like, I went to the school of Rehoboth. Where I get all my mental health tips. <laughs> and Vanderpump rules. Literally. Okay, you ready for our next story? I am. Beyonce won a big award at the iHeartRadio Music Awards last night, which were last night. She thanked her rock Jay-Z and their three beautiful children in her speech. So in a surprise to everyone, Beyonce attended the iHeartRadio Music Awards at the Dolby Theater in LA last night. This was so crazy. Yeah, but these are the things you do when you have a new album. You like, play yes, the but game. these are not the things you do in your Beyonce. But this is what Taylor and Beyonce like always do. They go to things that they're too good for. Um, and they're obviously like pre-arranged so that and that's why like Taylor and Beyonce are like the most awarded women of all time. Because like Taylor's over here at the People's Choice Awards, Beyonce's over here at the iHeartRadio Awards, awards that mean nothing, that have no value, that literally four people watch, but it's a part of like the game. It's a part of the game. It's a comfortable setting when you know that everyone there is just so happy for you to be there, that you're going to win, that you can sit wherever you want, that you'll get your picture taken, you'll wear it. Like, it's just a press move. It's yeah, and you're PR not like in competition. The people you're in competition with, like, aren't there. Like, yeah. It's like one big person goes to these awards. Like, it's like they have a prearranged thing with all the publicists. It's like, okay, Beyonce gets iHeart, Taylor gets Billboard, well, Ariana it's not even gets. gets. It's like Beyonce will go to this. Yeah, 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 yeah. But like, Beyonce and Taylor have never been at a crappy ass award show together. Right. But that's because the next crappy one, like, Taylor will go to for tortured dead pets. Yes, exactly. <laughs> 
Exactly. And Beyonce um, I, will be done with her promotional cycle like this where she's going so hard. But like she needed to step out. Cowboy Carter. And I love From head to the toe. Looks. She needed to be like in the new, you know, that's what you do. Even though you're Beyonce and you're Taylor, like you still got to do marketing. Play the game. Marketing. Yeah. Oh, and then and also I Heart Radio is the game because it is the radio. Radio. That's like one you have to go kiss ass. Like the I Heart Radio Awards like are literally viewed by 11 people, but it's put on by I Heart Radio and they're in charge of like, DJ radio and like getting your song played on the radio and that has a lot to do with going number one that has a lot to do with winning awards real awards so you have to like kiss the ass of this moronic company um it's a part of the game now I do love Beyonce stepping out I'm not upset at all because the vibes for this album press tour are very country very stagecoach obsessed like when she was on the red carpet she was doing finger guns she was like I'm obsessed yeah, really cute. She said in her speech, um, she thanked her family. She took a moment to shout out the innovators who paved the way for her illustrious career, including Stevie Wonder, who presented her with the trophy. Mm-hmm. She said thank you to Rosetta Tharp, Miss Tracy Chapman, Linda Martell, Prince, Stevie Wonder, Andre 3000, Tina Turner, Michael Jackson, and so many more who defied any label placed upon them. Um, also, wait, what was I going to say? Crap. It was a good point. Were you stuck down? Like, uh, oh, I love Beyonce with blonde hair. Like, it's like one of my favorite looks. However, somebody on Twitter pointed out that when she has blonde hair, she looks like Karen Huger. And seriously, they're twins. Even though on their face, like Beyonce's face and Karen Huger's face could not be more different. Something about the blonde hair, twins. Yeah, I see it. I love it. You see it? Yeah. No, she looks great. It was a great night. She looks great. Great night for music. I didn't watch, but I assume it was a great I night watched. for music. I you watched. You did? No. April Fool's. That wasn't April Fool's. That was just classic Jackson Claude banter. Low-key classic. Now, I want to make a comment because you get a lot of backlash for always drinking your coffee out of a disposable cup. And today you're drinking it, Sustainable Queen, reusable cup. The glass and the ice are clanking so much, it's going to bother the fuck out of the podcasters. Go back to killing the turtles tomorrow, please. Happily, first of all. Podcast audio, greater than important. Second of all, the turtles. that's funny coming from you, Jacuse. Because people have been saying that you're chewing on camera, you're slurping on camera, you're sneezing, and they're saying... Nobody's accused me of sneezing. Stop lying, bitch. Here. This is what people said. People said, because I've been starting to drink iced coffee on the the podcast, and they said it was really annoying them, the slushing of my ice. Jackie, I have not drank podcast. I have not drank podcast. I have not drank iced coffee in weeks. I just have my protein shake, and you'll notice every time I take a sip, I go like this. Because people said my gulping was annoying them too. So I'm listening and learning. What the I, hell are I've you seen doing, bitch? I've a lot of comments about like your side of the noise. I haven't seen one about mine. No, no. So I'm fixing it. I'm listening and learning. And I, I'm telling you today, it's annoying as hell. But I use these cups sometimes. I've never heard that. I literally hear it. I hear it too. It's a nice sound. I don't think they're going to like it. Sound off in the comments. It's giving, <laughs> I can hear the bells. Don't ya hear them chime? My dream, like, especially when I was overweight, like, my dream in this life was to play Tracy Turnblad in some sort of live action, whatever. I wouldn't need to learn. Like, I know everything. Like, I've memorized. Nikki Blonsky is a true hero of mine. And the fact that I'm now ineligible for the role because I've lost weight, like, is, is definitely part of the reason I was hesitant to start the drug. Would you gain weight for the role? Let me tell you, I wouldn't gain weight for anything. Like, I have been to the mountain and back. I know how hard it is. I would never purposely gain weight. Like, unless I was, of course, like having a child. <laughs> but you wouldn't, there's no role on this earth. No. That you would gain weight for. No, like my health, what I've learned over the last like year or two, I guess it's been like two years now. Um, my health is paramount. And I wouldn't, you know, th- no matter how thirsty I am, I wouldn't give that, give that up for anything. Beautiful. For real. And like, let's be real. There's like one role you're eligible for as a bigger person. There's a million roles they'll cast you in if you're skinny. Sometimes I feel as though that's the prerequisite. Mm. Yeah. So for my career, it's better to be be staying. Well, you just said a mouthful there, sister. Actually, I just saw this rant Busy Phillips went on. And you know, I'm not a Busy Phillips girl. It was the most amazing rant. Someone, Someone brought up Ozempic at like this event she did. And she just went off. And I loved it. I forget like what the whole hypothesis of it was, but I just found myself like nodding. I'm like, yes, Busy Phillips. Interesting. I want to see. 
Oh no, she was basically like, you know, the men in this industry take human growth hormone. And that's how they're always at 60, like so hot. And everyone's like, wow, how are these men so hot? And they keep getting roles like for superheroes. And it's like, okay, now women are taking Ozempic to like stay thin and, you know, keep jobs and everyone's coming at us for it. Like, leave us alone. And she's like, and the world is just such a different place when you're skinny versus when you're fat. People treat you differently. You have different work opportunities. Everything is just better for you when you're thinner. And that's the world we live in. So now there's something to help us with that. And we're still getting yelled at for it. It was really, I loved it. That's nice. Yeah. Next story. Someone else who has something to say. Shakira has eight months later oh. given her thoughts on the Barbie movie. <laughs> Shakira says her tween sons absolutely hated the Barbie movie. So she told Allure in her April 2024 cover story that her sons absolutely hated the Barbie movie because they found it emasculating. And she uh, said that she... How old are her sons? 11 and 9. And they know what emasculating is and feels like? That's a good question. Maybe they said it in their version and she's summing it up paraphrasing yeah um she said she agrees to a certain extent because she wants them to feel as empowered as she does she said quote i'm raising two boys i want them to feel powerful too while respecting women i like pop culture when it attempts to empower women without robbing men of their possibility to be men to also protect and provide She clarified that men and women complement each other by serving different purposes. Quote, I believe in giving women all the tools and the trust that we can do it all without losing our essence, without losing our femininity. I think that men have a purpose in society and women have another purpose as well. We complement each other and that complement should not be lost. Okay, like I actually like agree with some of her points, but I don't know what the fuck this has to do with the Barbie movie. And just like, girl, the Barbie movie came out a year ago, like not the time. Um, And I also find like, her nine-year-old son feeling emasculated like I'm not buying any of it but like the latter point of what she's saying it's like men and women are different and like women are beautiful and powerful and men are important too like yeah we're all important like I like that message but I'm not understanding like the nine and 11 year old son in the Barbie movie part of it you know yeah well I I think otherwise why is she just saying men are important too if not you know she needed a she needed a reason (laughs) yeah she's just sharing her thoughts I actually think that that's a really good take on the movie and I think in some ways it's a version of what we were saying which is like women are all powerful and great and should be lifted up and that was but like not we want to be equal right like right just it goes from this to this that's not equality either either. yeah I um there was like a lot pulled from this um interview that Shakira did I saw something else today that I was like okay and like she was just kind of like saying stuff like hold on talking about Eve the story of Eve and Adam and Eve yeah is she okay like I honestly like I felt like this article was like really um bizarre let me read exactly what she said yeah I read this thing about Eve and I'm like okay bible sure about how the story of Eve was like to created to like keep women down Eve was a story created by misogynists okay well Eve was like created by like God so (laughs) cracking up Eve was a story created by misogynists to put women in a little box where we have to remain silent, not speak our minds, and not be a catalyst for change, to keep things as they are. I think there's something refreshing about women when they get to be themselves and be unapologetic because we've had to apologize so many damn times in the past. So, like, I don't know. This article, like, she's just all over the place because this is giving, like, millennial. You can't put her in a box, honestly, because it's giving the antithesis. This is giving, like, Barbie movie energy. Yes! Yes! No, so I I I was going to say, it's giving America Ferreira's monologue in Barbie. I like the honesty. I disagree with that point. Like, I don't see even that way, but I go off, queen. The thing about Shakira is that she can't be silenced. No. No, she really can't. I wonder what she's got going on right now that she's like saying so much stuff. Gearing up. Yeah, she's gearing up. She also did this like performance inside a billboard time, a Times Square and billboard. Like the billboard opened up and like Shakira came out on top of this building. It was kind of wild. Was it good? And the Shakira stands were like screaming below. Okay. Oh, baby, when you talk like that. Yeah, actually, I can do a really good Shakira impersonation. I haven't done it in a while. That wasn't it. Okay, do it. <clears throat> I haven't done it in so long. I need to take my headphones out. Hold on, okay. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, I'm like gonna be really embarrassed if this is bad because like at camp it used to be like my my You're thing. Like, I was doing it in the talent show. Okay, mm. damn, I really wish I practiced. I'm like about between this and the Amber Heard prank, like I'm gonna be humiliated today. Okay, <laughs> whenever, wherever we're meant to be together, I'll be there and you'll be here, and that's the deal, my dear. Okay, that was good. That was good. Very, very good. I would say. Though it was giving like Celine Dion a little bit in a good way. You know what? I actually feel that. I do. Like my, uh, sorry. But yeah, like goals. I do. 
Galls, yeah. Thank you. Very good. Thank you very much. Thanks. Are you ready for our next story? What number? Four. No. Oh, no. Okay. Are you ready for our next story, number four? No, I'm not. Thank you for asking because today's episode is brought to you by Dreamland Baby. Dreamland Baby is a great, great company and great product for mamas and babies. And the Dream Weighted Sleep Sack is a product that you need to know about if you have a little one, especially if sleep is evading you at the moment. So the Dream Weighted Sleep Sack is a weighted sleep sack for babies that is so cozy for them and it does for a baby what a weighted blanket would do for an adult helps to fall asleep helps to stay asleep calms anxiety it's just really cozy and it makes them feel the way that they would in in your warm bosom so i love the dreamland sleep sacks the sleep swaddles for babies as the babies get bigger you can switch from swaddled in to arms out to then just the sack in general which is always arms out and the tagless design avoids the rotation it has a two-way zipper for easy diaper changes you guys know how much a two-way zipper is so important to me the cover calm technology makes sure the weight of the weighted sack is evenly distributed and it's 100 percent soft and natural cotton so the weighted sleep sacks are a major key for us me and zach getting sleep and for Charlie specifically to get great sleep throughout the night. He's been using the Dreamland products since he was a newborn and we just love them so much. He's now upgraded to the sack and we love it. So if you want to try out the Dreamland products, go to dreamlandbabyco.com and enter our code TOAST at checkout to receive 20% off site-wide and free shipping. This offer is for new and existing customers. That's TOAST at dreamlandbabyco.com. And today's episode is also brought to you by Roback. You all know Roback, and we absolutely love their new women's line. Roback's uh, women's hoodie and jogger sets, very Sheree, are actually incredible. They're super soft, and we cannot take them off. And you know, like Sheree said, for spring, it's joggers. And more specifically, it's Roback joggers. They're incredibly comfortable, and the fabric is super soft. It's called the V-Soft fabric because it's V-Soft. Whether it's a lazy day or we're out running errands, we love wearing our Roback hoodie and jogger sets. Get yourself a set and stay toasty all season long. Everyone knows we love a good crew neck, and these these may be the best that we've worn. Roback also just restocked their active dress, which is like went super viral. It was sold out for a while. It's made with their signature GTG technology. You're able to keep your dress on when you're on the go or when you got to go. It's super genius. We don't know how they did it. They are made with lightweight, breathable fabrics that are designed to keep you comfortable while you're on the move. Also, they have great stuff for men. So if like the man in your life just needs some stuff to wear because like he doesn't know how to dress, Roback has great stuff. It's made really well. He'll look really handsome in it. If you haven't already, it's now time to try out some Roback. Use code toast on Roback.com for a generous 20% off your first order through the end of this week. That's spelled R-H-O-B-A-C-K.com. That's 20% off hoodies, joggers, crews, and more with code toast. Stay comfortable this spring with Roback. Thank you, Claude. You are absolutely welcome. And thank you to Roback for being one of the most generous sponsors we have. Our next story is really disturbing. Oh, no. Angie Harmon says an Instacart driver shot and killed her dog during a delivery. You're lying. Angie Harmon says that her dog Oliver was shot and killed over Easter weekend at her North Carolina home. The actress shared on Monday via Instagram that Oliver was killed by an Instacart delivery man on Saturday. In a post filled with photos and videos of her dog, which is a German Shepherd Beagle mix, she wrote that the driver got out of his car, delivered the food, and then shot their dog. What the fuck? This Easter weekend, a man delivering groceries for Instacart shot and killed our precious Oliver. Our ring camera was charging in the house, which he saw and then knew he wasn't being recorded an instacart representative said in a statement to people we were deeply saddened and disturbed to hear about this incident we have no tolerance for violence of any kind and the shopper account was immediately suspended from our platform we have been in direct contact with the customer and are cooperating with law enforcement on their investigation Harmon ex- Holy fuck. She explained that authorities let the driver go because he claimed self-defense, adding that he did not have a scratch or a bite on him, nor were his pants torn. So he said the dog attacked him, so he shot the dog. There's and he no- just had a gun doing deliveries? And you just have to, like, shoot a dog? Even though he attacked, even though there's no physical signs right, of the right. attack. So even if he, like, came over to you, it wasn't like a rabid attack. 
Oh my God. First of all, I follow Angie Harmon on Instagram. I didn't even know this. This is literally the saddest thing ever. And like, I just feel like every day I wake up and like somebody else is like going through something. It's like a new thing I have to worry about. Like I never thought, you know, walking in New York, you have to get punched in the face if you're on your phone. Like what has the world come to where everyone's mentally ill and everybody's doing insane things? Like the list of things I have to worry about every day, it just keeps going up. It's so true. She also said he was shopping under a woman's identity named Merle. So not no, even this under is his so own fishy. profile. This is why? Like if... This is so fishy because like if there was a real case where like the dog attacked and like, you know, Angie heard and he was screaming and he shot like if there was proof that would have been just like really unfortunate. Yes. But like I wouldn't have blamed the guy like for, you know, he's getting attacked by a dog. But there's no proof of that. He's under an alias. He's like lying about his identity. There's weird things going on here. And I believe Angie and I'm really upset. Yeah, I hope that they properly investigate this, I guess, with no footage. It's. He, he said, said, she said. She said, this is so tragic. And yeah, just another thing to worry about. What in the world? What in the world? Like Rosalian Isles Queen. Yeah. Yeah, actually, not to be so annoying, I actually know Angie Harmon. I do. How? We met once and we like became like kind of, we Fast just like friends. connected. And now we like talk all the time on Instagram. I could see it. Well, you should That's why when you were reading her. the story, I just, I just sent her a DM. I was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry about Oliver. Like that's literally like, I would, Die. Yeah. Insane. Insane. Horrible story. I tried horrible. To tell you. you did. I when you said like crazy, I was like, oh right. What conjoined twins got married next? You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where my head goes. Well, our fifth and final story is some good news to end on. Okay. Some good biz news. Celeb G-B-N? biz news. G B C N. Yes. G C B N. G C B N. Taylor Swift is declared a billionaire by Forbes as she joins the list for the first time following her era's tour success. Oh my God, I didn't even know this. I knew it was like coming up. According to Forbes, Taylor Swift has officially reached billionaire status. On Tuesday, Forbes released their 2024 billionaire list and Taylor climbed to 14th place with a $1.1 billion fortune following her era's tour success. They also listed now, the world's richest people in order. Um, Bernard. I love this. Is, these are my absolute favorite lists. Yeah, we, and like, we get these to do days, it like once a year. Once a year. Okay. No, because they, they do like four lists. But yeah, they, they do, do one like for music. celebrity, the world's celebrity billionaires. Well, back to Taylor just really quickly. I want to say it's beyond impressive, like obviously being like a female billionaire. We were talking about this, I feel like last year on the toast. There's literally like no female billionaires and the ones that are, are like either widows or heiresses who inherited or from their divorces. fathers or husbands. Or divorcees. So like there was, I think there was like one or, I don't even know if there was one on the list who was a self-made billionaire. The fact that Taylor is like a female billionaire is super, super impressive. But also the fact that she's one of the only people one of the only musicians to be a billionaire exclusively through music. Like Rihanna's a billionaire, but not really through her music, through Fenty. Jay-Z is a billionaire through his, you know, very lucrative businesses. He has a bunch and not really through his music. Taylor is like the only one who really has never veered into anything other than music. And that's really impressive. Yeah, it is really impressive. There's actually a good amount of women on the list of celebrity billionaires. Well, Kim, yeah. So number Kylie. one celebrity billionaire. Let me think. You're not going to guess. Oh, really? Because we're not considering like Elon a celebrity, right? No, no. We'll get to I him. I don't know. We'll get to him. Who? George Lucas, the Star Wars director. Okay, like celebrity? It's bit, we're obviously playing fast and loose with the word. <laughs> Number two, who is literally the same type as George Lucas, and you would say he's a celebrity. So it's just about like thirst level. James Cameron? Who? James Cameron? No, but keep going. I literally don't know any directors. Steven Spielberg? Yeah. Really? Yeah, would you say he's a celebrity? Yeah. Yeah, I would. Number three, sports. LeBron? Michael Jordan. Class, classic. I can't help but think of Larsa. Like, that's really good news for Larsa. It is, it's good brand association. <laughs> Four, woman. All right, just read them. I'm tired of guessing. Oh, I was having fun. I feel like we were doing good. We're like, it's always more fun to be the person like, guess, guess, yeah. than the person guessing. Okay, okay. Number four. <laughs> <laughs> number four, Oprah. Wait, I'm sorry. Can you give these numbers? Oh, yeah. I'll start from the top. George Lucas, $5.5 billion. What? See, he sold his production company, Lucasfilm, to Disney for $4 billion. Got it. Number two, Steven Spielberg, $4.8 billion. 
That's insane. Number three, Michael Jordan, three point two billion. Damn. Number four, Oprah Winfrey, two point eight billion. Billion, yeah. Number five, Jay Z, two point five billion. Billion. Number six, Kim Kardashian, one point seven billion. Super impressive. I'm sorry, like that's really yeah. To go from, you know, skinny T. Yeah. To billionaire. I'm sorry. It's literally one of the most impressive things on the planet. And she keeps going up. Like, I feel because like. Because Skims is really. And I feel like it took her a long time to, like, find her thing. She was doing a bunch of things, like, Kimoji, and that weren't, like, working. And Skims. And it's so funny when you think about how Skims started out. Kimono. Yeah. And, like, kind of really rocky. They just kill it. Their products are amazing it's the best shit i've ever worn like i'm sorry it is her skims was valued at four billion dollars in a 2023 funding round it's insane yeah and it's worth it number seven peter jackson 1.5 billion he's the director behind lord of the rings and the hobbits okay i'm Multiple learning hobbits. like being a movie director is kind of everything yeah. and i need to be it number eight tyler perry 1.4 <gasps> billion i love i have like a lot of love in my heart for tyler perry yeah Number nine, Rihanna, one point four billion. So they're tied. They're eight. They're both tied. Okay. Eight, technically, number ten, Tiger Woods, one point three billion. I feel like that makes sense. Like golf is like one of the most lucrative sports because like you're not on a team. It's just you, and there's you literally have to split. There's three. Like there's a lot of famous golfers, but there's three whose names we know. Think about how many basketball players' names yeah. we know. Football. There's Tiger Woods. There's Rory McIlroy. And there's Phil Mickelson. Like, that's it. Yeah. It's kind of iconic. Who's that, like, one who drinks Diet Coke? Come again? Ben's favorite golfer. With a D. He has a John lot. John Daly. With a what? John Daly. Oh, that's not Ben's favorite golfer, but, like, Ben relates to him in, like, a physical sense. Ben's favorite he's golfer. he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 11, LeBron James, 1.2 billion. Brilliant. Brilliant. Number 12, Magic Johnson, 1.2 billion. But they're tied. Number three, also tied at 1.2 billion, Dick Wolf. You're lying. I mean, makes sense. Like, literally makes sense. Created the greatest thing alive. You should be a billionaire. And then number 14, but I guess they went up to 14 because of all the ties. 1.1 billion, Taylor Swift emerges on the list. And it'll be interesting to watch her climb up the list. Like, Kim has been climbing up the list. I feel like Jay-Z's been on, like, the top five forever, you know? Yeah. Um, but I think Taylor's going to give them all for a run for their money. I think so, too. But I just want to say, like, no shade to anyone else on this list. I'm sure everyone's, like, working really hard. I feel like Taylor is working harder than all of them. Yeah, well, she's also just, like, in our faces more. No, like, she literally, she made this list because of doing Eras Tour, which is, like, three hours, non Physical. Like, and she's been working for so long. Like, how many albums did she drop in the last three years? Like, it's true. She's working so hard. But also, I think that is, like, the phrase, money talk talks wealth whispers. Like, people who are super, super wealthy, like, they're not in your face. You know, you don't know. They're just, like, you know, moving in silence. No, I think also it's, like, a lot of these people have mailbox money. Yeah. But I don't, aside from, you know, the money she makes from her music, which never really made her a billionaire yet. Like, because you said she doesn't have those businesses. That's why I feel like she works harder than everyone. Because yes. when you that's set why up a it's business, like, it's hard at first. But then eventually, like, it all comes in. That's why it's, like, really impossible to become a billionaire via music. Because you have to work so hard for so long. Nonstop. And you always, as in an, an, any career, you have, like, a peak of a couple of years where you're, like, big and hot. But nobody stays this hot forever. And that's what's so impressive about Taylor's career is, like, you know, she's winning album of the year when she's 16 and when she's 32. Like, nobody has 17 years of, like, peakdom. Yeah. Why doesn't she start a business? I don't know. I mean, Selena Gomez is a billionaire. And, like, she does the least when it comes to, like, music and, and you know, being a celebrity. She just, like, really works on rare beauty and it's made her a billionaire. But what, what would Taylor's be? First of all, Taylor could come out with a beauty line and it would be successful. Her, yeah, her makeup yeah, yeah. is iconic and she would promote it really well. That's yeah, a no-brainer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But what else? She would have to, like, position herself because she could come out with a line of, like, homeware, like, kitchenware. She's always cooking. I was She would have to like, do more even though, content like that, but that would be easy for her. And I don't think there's, like, enough money in this, like, type of business. But, like, if she did, like, a... I don't even know what the right word is. Kind of, like, papyrus. Like notebooks pens stationery 
very paper source vibes. She's so paper source. Journals. Journals, exactly. Planners, cute notebooks, inspirational phrases. Cards, like um, Hallmark, like not Hallmark cards, you know. Yes, like reading cards. Stationary. Reading cards. She's like a, with like, her, I, like she could lyrics, become like, like a paper company. A paper company. Does that make sense? Yes, Claudia, a paper company. Paper And goods. it would be called, it would be called like tailored. I mean, if we had anything to say about it. No, not tailored, tailored. T-A-I-L-O-R-E-D. Oh. I like tailored better. Of course you do. <laughs> yeah, so it is shocking because even like when, of course, you know, you have, when you think of Taylor, you think of Beyonce. Beyonce's done quite a few businesses. Ivy Park, we reported recently she was doing a hair care company. Um, Tidal is like her and Jay-Z's thing. Like she's into it. Yeah. Or I also could see Taylor starting her own record label because that's a big passion of hers, like redesigning the music industry. And she's made enormous changes for herself and other artists through like her work with with the labels and her work with she got Apple Music to pay everyone more. But if she started her own label and then like Sabrina Carpenter was yeah. one of her. No, nope. um, she should do that. Yeah. Things she should because, do that. Because then you become as big as Universal. That's a billion dollar company. Yeah, and she would then have like stake in all the people that she's promoting. Yeah, no, like why hasn't she done that? Yeah, I was surprised when she left. But when she left, that's why like the whole Taylor Swift Scott Borchetta scooter thing was such a was such at such a bad time for Taylor because I think if you look at the arc of Taylor's career, she's never really had a flop era. But I think before and during Lover was this lull for her where she wasn't as popular as she has been or she was going to become and she was like up for renegotiations and they said you know you release one you buy one you release one you buy one or you can go somewhere else and leave it all here and that's what she did and I feel like if she was where she was at now and her record label deal was up she would start her own label yeah so lover was the first post big machine album yeah but are there so, so when, but the songs on there aren't about the big machine breakup because they were kind of done pre, yeah previously yeah so then the next album like the folklore evermores are more about Scooter my tears ricochet yeah. Yeah, yeah okay okay no she's gonna start her own record label Turdy called it I know I think it's like one of my so I would ideas. love her paper company and she would have like a lifelong customer in me that's I think more down the line like that's like a retirement job I would love that me too. Okay. Oh, that's all the stories. Oh, but then the other part of the list was just world's richest people, period. Hit me. Number one, Bernard Alnault with 230. LVMH. LVMH, 233 billion. You're lying. No. 233 billion? Yeah. Wait, that's so much money. That's insane. Give me one. Give me one. One. <laughs> Number two, it's your boy, Elon, 195 billion so crazy i don't know why i thought like the richest people like maybe max out at like 100 billion i didn't know we were nearing 300 i feel like it keeps going up yeah well that's if you're doing a good job yeah yeah yeah, yeah. number Wait, three that's so crazy. jeff bezos at 194 billion so i feel like him and elon like just go back and forth depending on the yes, day swapping the fact that they're a billion apart like how do you even know that i guess because yeah. of the stock value is exactly how you know it but still number four Mark Yuckerberg, 177 oh. billion. Oh. Number five, Larry Ellison, 141 billion. What does he do? Oracle, question mark. Cool. Feels all right. Number six, Warren Buffett, 133 billion. Kind of slacking. Okay, like Warren Buffett. Let's let's just dive Warren into Buffett, that for a second. Discuss. Okay, question mark for me. Like, I know Warren Buffett. Like, Warren Buffett, Warren Buffett. Like, oh, his stock tips. Warren Buffett says this. Warren Buffett says that. Like, finance bros. Like, they have a picture of Warren Buffett, like, above their beds. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I believe Berkshire Hathaway. Yep. That's him? Mm-hmm. He started that? Mm-hmm. And what does he look like? I kind of like not knowing, you know? He kind of looks like what you think he would look like. Let me see, because I feel like he looks like Warren Beatty, that old guy who messed oh. up the Oscars thing. Yeah, it's like Warren Beatty would play him in a movie, but doesn't really look like him. No, by the way, twins. That's exact. Oh, by the way, he's much older than 93. He's 93. Yeah, this also has ages, which is interesting. Elon's the youngest on this list. Go, Elon. Go, Elon. Go, Elon. That's because he's also like, wait, he's younger than Mark Yuckerberg? 
Oh, I'm sorry. No, I skipped over the yuck. Yuck is 39. Elon's 52. Jeff Bezos is 60. He just had his big party. Jeff Bezos is 60? Yeah. What did you think he was? I don't know. He kind of acts like a teenager, like running in around love. on his boat with his girlfriend. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why I thought he was like max 45. I don't know. That's just what I thought. No. 60. Okay. And then number seven, Bill Gates, 128 billion. Like literally how? Like, Microsoft? I feel like nobody's had a Microsoft computer since 1999. I don't know. I have, like, well, a theory about Well, he also has, Bill like, Gates. a lot of other stuff that he does now. Like, it, he bought up, like, all the a lot of farmland. In well, he, yeah, people are upset about that. He bought up all the farmland in this country. Like, yeah, from he the bought farmers. up all, I think he's the largest owner of farmland. Landowner. Yeah, in the country. He's, like, making, like, I don't know. He's, he has a lot of experiments going on. I think he's making some sort of, like, synthetic breast milk. I don't know. I kind of hear like that one. Hate, I kind of hate Bill Gates. I feel like he's always been so rich. And I remember like, I'm sure he should be rich like from Microsoft. But like, my God, Microsoft, like if anybody has a Microsoft computer, you're like, oh my God, get a job. Like it's just Microsoft is not it. Yeah. He invested in lab produced breast milk. He gives me freaky energy. I don't know. I think he gives everyone freaky energy. Like because it's hard he's also to talk like about Bill Gates and not like fall down a rabbit hole. Plus, because he also, was on a lot of manifests from Epstein's island. Like he's a freak. He's a freak. He's freaky deaky. And then like him and Melinda, who everyone were like, oh my god, couple goals. And then they like broke up. It's like what the hell happened? I don't know. I just got weird vibes from him. What does Melinda know? What does Melinda know? Number eight, Steve Ballmer, one hundred twenty-one billion. Did I don't we ever find out? Remember we had that news story like two years ago that the IRS like s released a notice that uh, one of the world's wealthiest people had passed away. They didn't away. release a notice. It, they, it, people like were tracking IRS incoming like earnings and there was a huge sum which really could have only been from a billionaire dying and that ta the right. inheritance tax. I yeah. know. I never heard anything about it again. That was the fun story. That was a little fun investigation. Yeah. Who's Steve Ballmer? You tell me. You have the list. Yeah, but they didn't say who Steve Ballmer is. So maybe he's like family money? I'll Google him. It's worth a quick Google. Ballmer. I like saying. Ballmer. What I like saying his name. Oh, he's a CEO of Microsoft. Jackie, I'm telling you, there is something up with Microsoft. Like, I don't believe it. What, what else does Microsoft own? Yeah, because they were like in the talks to buy TikTok. Like, how can you afford that? Right, when your CEO is a billionaire. I don't know, I'm not buying it. What does Microsoft own? LinkedIn. Irrelevant. Okay. Skype. Okay, like. Yeah, like a bunch of losery ass early 2000s tech companies. Yeah, Comcast. Oh, okay. 11.5% uh, of Comcast. Oh. Okay, I don't want to fall down this rabbit hole. I'll, I won't be able to come back up. <laughs> Nine, Mukesh Ambani, $116 billion on my way okay. to search what Mr. Ambani Oh, does. by the way, I believe that is um, the guy. Is he Indian? Yeah. They just had the wedding where Rihanna performed. It was his son. Do they do textiles? What do they do? They does. They does. He runs yeah. Reliance Industries, which has interest in petrochemicals, oil and gas, telecom, retail. Oh, and oh. Okay, but it kind of can be everything. Maybe they do have textiles. Everyone was just talking about this family on my TikTok because it was this huge wedding. So many celebrities were there. Ivanka Trump was there. I think Kim was there. Rihanna was there. It was like kind of crazy. Be uh, no, yeah. Beyonce. Oh, yeah. No, I saw the wedding. The wedding made it to reels. Don't worry. Yeah. Okay, good, good, good. The wedding made it everywhere. And the number 10 is Larry Page. Google. Google. And he's 51. Okay, so he's also younger than Elon. That's so crazy, like that you. But him and Elon have beef. Do they? Yeah, you remember What's Larry Page called him a species. A what? Species, like prejudiced against other species, because Elon doesn't think that artificial intelligence should be able to be as smart or smarter than us. Oh, I'm a species because I think like you know dogs are dumb. Like I'm smart, you know. <laughs> he, and he was talking about like robots shouldn't be able to like. They should cap their intelligence. By the way, the fact that like the word species no. exists, like ageist, species, racist, like. We have gone too far and people in tech are truly mentally ill. Yeah, no, that's insane. So that's really what I know about Larry Page and it's going to be a no from me, dog. It's going to be a no from me. Well, oh, I didn't know today was going to be the day where we did the list. It's my favorite day. <laughs> and we love our lists, but that's the best one. And we love our billionaires and we hope to be one one day. Who's your favorite and least favorite billionaire? 
on the Ooh, list. Oh, such a good question. Well, probably my favorite now would be tailored. Okay. But are you talking about like business people? Yeah, we have to do keep the conversations apart because also there are probably like a hundred people in between the celebrities. Yeah, okay, let's do real and the like celebrities a, and their measly bill. And the my favorite real billionaire is the Arnault guy. Like I just to be if you're not of first, you're she last. Goes to you know, one. yeah, yeah. And of course, like he owns everything cool: Louis Vuitton, Moet, Hennessy. Like that's the coolest company, LVMH. They own all the designer brands, liquor brands, like goals. Mm-hmm. My least favorite would definitely be Mark Zuckerberg. Yeah, Zuckerberg. And like as a Jew representing us on the list, like he doesn't speak for us. No, no, he doesn't. That little, you know. Yucky Zuckerberg. Who's your favorite? I mean, we know your favorite is Elon. Period. Least? Yuck. The yuck. (laughs) The yuckinator. And like I said, Jackie and I hope to be billionaires one day. So don't forget to listen to this podcast. Subscribe wherever you get your podcast. Stream it while you're sleeping. Like leave it on We're also available (laughs) on YouTube wherever you... No, we're also available on YouTube. So if you're watching us on YouTube, please feel free to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. We are also available as podcasts anywhere. Podcasts can be found on Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, Public Radio, iHeartRadio, CastBox, all the places where it's in podcasts. Find us at Chelsea, five-star review about a beautiful, stunning, and future billionaire-esque we are. Love ya. Love ya. Bye.